Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I've been continuing to test my uh, MacBook Air with the M1 processor in it and now I've come to the battery testing. So what are the real world, not the theoretical uh, numbers that Apple give, what are the real world numbers for the battery life in the new MacBook Air? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. <laughs> So the new MacBook Air with the M1 processor has a 49.9 watt hour battery, which is actually the same battery size as the previous generation of MacBook Air, that's the Retina version from 2020. However, Apple are saying that you get three hours more battery life compared to the Intel version. Now the question is, do those numbers actually add up? So to test the battery, basically I ran the MacBook Air through various tasks measuring the battery drop in percentage over an hour, sometimes over two hours, try to get a good idea of how the battery copes. Now, what a lot of people don't realize, or maybe they do, maybe, but they just don't talk about it, is that actually the screen is a huge power draw on your laptop, whether that's a MacBook or it's any other kind of laptop, the screen takes a lot of power. So the first thing I did was looked at how much power the screen takes just when the Mac is idle. So there's no apps open, no screensaver kicks in, the display never goes to sleep, Wi-Fi is on, but over an hour or two hours, the amount of traffic that's going on there is pretty negligible. Now on the MacBook Air, there are 16 steps that you can control the uh, bright from very, very dark right up to its full brightness. Now, when you have it on the lowest setting, that's just one little pip there displayed on the uh, on the brightness setting, then the, actually the lap MacBook will last for 32 hours doing nothing. It will sit there for 32 hours doing nothing on the very, very lowest setting. If you bump that up to about halfway through, that's the eight bar mark, then that number drops to 16 hours. And then when you bump it up to the full brightness, that number drops down to eight hours. So we've got 32 hours, 16 hours, and eight hours. That seems pretty linear. That's according to the testing that I've done. So the first thing to note is that actually even just a little bit of brightness changing on your uh, laptop will affect significantly the battery life. If you like to run it at full brightness, then it is gonna eat away at that battery pretty quickly. So clearly when Apple are talking about the hour battery life they're giving, they're quoting uh, 15 to 18 hours depending on the activity. They are talking about when the, the uh, brightness is in the middle, on eight steps up from the end. So first of all, I did some streaming tests, streaming from YouTube, streaming from Netflix, uh, over Wi-Fi. Now again, if you have the brightness down at its lowest level, which is barely visible, I must say, then you'll get about 25 hours of streaming from the MacBook Air. If you move that to a more reasonable position, which is in the dead center, then that's gonna turn into about 14 hours of streaming. And then if you push it right up to the maximum, you're gonna get less than eight hours, probably seven, seven and a half hours. And again, that's because really the display is eating away at the battery much, much more than anything that the CPU has got to do or the Wi-Fi has got to do to receive that data. So if you take streaming as a kind of a, a good idea for general productivity, because if you're writing emails on a web browser, if you're using one of the productivity apps, then the screen's probably on, it's in the middle brightness, there's some stuff going on, there's some network going on. So if you can get 14 hours of streaming out on 50% brightness, then you are gonna get at least 14 hours of general productivity out of your MacBook. However, not all tasks are equal when it comes to productivity. A lot of people like to use their MacBooks for development, whether that's development for uh, iPhones, iPads, or for the Mac itself, or just general web development. Then a lot of people use the MacBook for that. Of course, it's portable, it's handy, it's got a nice display, and so on. Now, what I did was I took a large open source project, something in the region of 750,000 lines of code over about 800 files, and I kicked off a build, that's using make command, so it's a command line build, and then once the build completed, I did 
did a clean and then a build again and a clean and a build again to see how much compiling this device can do. Now to do this, I put it down onto its very, very lowest brightness setting because I wanted to see just what the interaction between the CPU and the memory and the internal storage was if you do this constant build. I also did a build with minus J4, which for those of you that aren't familiar with make means that four of the CPU cores will be used to compile four files simultaneously and work their way through the uh, 800 or so files that need to be done. And I verified that with the resource monitor that on average four cores were being used. Now here's the thing, if you do that setup, how long do you think the battery lasts? Go on, have a guess. Three hours. Three hours. That's not what I was expecting. I was expecting a higher number. Now remember the brightness was on very, very low. So what this really is showing is that the CPU, and I'm pretty much sure that the reading and writing to the internal storage is taking up a lot of uh, energy. So if you are using your Mac for building a lot for continuous builds, for test runs, for unit testing, then you're gonna to have to know that that's not gonna uh, survive very long just on, just on the battery. Because if you're just doing development inside of an IDE, you're writing code, you're compiling it, then of course you're doing incremental builds, you're doing obviously some coding, so that's more productivity with the occasional build. So that's not gonna be so bad, but if you are really hammering it, building large projects, then note it's gonna eat away at the battery. Next we come to gaming, and I've tried three types of games to see how the battery life is affected. First of all, Minecraft, the Java version of Minecraft. So I was able to download and install a native version of the Java runtime environment. So this is native M1 Java running on the uh, MacBook Air, and then running Minecraft, again, with the brightness at 50%, which I'm assuming is kind of an average kind of number. Then you get about seven hours of gameplay using Minecraft with Java. And that may translate to people who are running Java services or heavy Java programs on their, uh, on their MacBook Air, that's gonna give you an idea of what that will do to the battery life. I then downloaded Asphalt 9 from the uh, Apple uh, App Store. So this is an Intel version of the game and it's running under x86 emulation. Now the first thing to notice is it runs actually very really quite well. It is a highly optimized game because of course you can find it on iPhones and on Android and on PC. So it is a game that has been optimized for many, many platforms. And interestingly enough, when running it, even though I'm using x86 emulation, the bottom of the MacBook Air doesn't heat up very much at all and again running that I was able to get seven hours of uh, usage out of it. So seven hours of x86 emulation running a game from the App Store. And then the final test was to run a bit more of a demanding game. In this case, I downloaded Steam. Steam was able to install OK under x86 emulation. I then downloaded and installed Tomb Raider from 2013. So not a bleeding edge modern game. However, sufficiently detailed and difficult for the MacBook Air. And again, that's an Intel application. And running that under x86 emulation was able to give me 60 frames a second according to the benchmark that's built into Tomb Raider 2013. So that's a good number for the uh, x86 emulation going on inside of the MacBook Air. However, the battery life does take a hit. I started playing it and with an hour of gameplay, the bottom of the device does become quite hot to handle and you only get three hours of battery life. So in three hours, you'll go from 100 down to the uh, laptop warning you about low battery and then very soon shutting down. So three hours doing heavy gaming with x86 emulation, Tomb Raider 2013. So what have we discovered? We discovered that the brightness makes a big difference to the overall battery life. If you're using lower brightness numbers, then you are gonna get a longer battery life. If you crank it right up high, it's gonna drastically reduce the battery life. If you're using something in the middle, maybe a little bit lower, then for productivity, you're gonna get 15, 14, 15 hours without any problem at all. That's including web browsing, social media, productivity, web streaming, and so on. If you're just doing heavy compiling work, which I'm guessing is heavy IO stuff, then the battery will go quite quickly. Uh, maybe even three hours is all you're gonna get out of that if you're doing lots and lots of IO stuff. Gaming, bit of a mixed bag, seven or eight hours on a kind of a, an average game, Minecraft, Asphalt 9. But if you're doing a heavy game with lots of emulation, that can go right down to just three hours. So what's the takeaway here? If you're into productivity, 
knock your brightness down a few notches and that's certainly going to eke out more battery life for you if you're into gaming make sure you plug it in before you start playing the game if you're into compiling then again or heavy io make sure you plug it in before you start your work Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I hope you found these numbers and my testing useful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like these kind of videos and you don't want to be at the mercy of the YouTube uh, recommendation algorithm, the best thing to do is subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon, and then you'll know for sure when I've released a new video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.